and I'm the President Emeritus of Georgetown University. And the years? That I was president from 1989 to 2001. Excellent. So you remember Professor Karski. Share your memories with us. Well, no one who ever met him could forget him. First of all, he looked like what he was. He was both a prophet and a wonderful professor. He came to Georgetown right after World War II and applied to study for a doctorate. Father Edmund Walsh, the founder of our School of Foreign Service, took to him, more or less adopted him, gave him a fellowship. And when Jan finished his doctorate, uh, Father Walsh hired him for the faculty, on which he taught from 1952 until 1992, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that means that he began teaching at he began teaching at Georgetown the year I began as an undergraduate, which seems to me another age entirely. It was another century and a place far, far away. Right. But one of my first memories of Georgetown were the front lawns, and that's where we today have the wonderful uh, sculpture of him on the on the on the bench with the chess set that you have in front of the consulate here in New York. We're very proud of it. Um, so Jan began teaching in 1952, and uh, I didn't have him because I was a student of the college. I had wanted to be a doctor. Uh, so I'm very sorry not to have had him, but uh, everybody knew who he, who he was. And I did get to know him quite well in the last years of his life when I became president. So what was the feeling at, at, within the Georgetown community about him? How well known was he within the professors? He, the he was very well known, uh, especially among students of history, uh, Second World War. I was, as I said earlier, a pre-med, and so I took me a while to realize that we had a hero in our midst. And of course, he, was, he became known, especially at first, because of his work with the Polish underground. And the book that chronicles that, I think it's called The Story of a State, My Report to the World. The Story of a Secret State, My Report to the World, has just been reissued, as everybody probably here knows. And uh, I remember reading in the Financial Times that when they saw the reissue of it just recently, that uh, the stench of war still clings to the book it is so powerfully written and so real. Uh, he had tried, as uh, many people know, to bring the news of what was happening to the Jews in Europe uh, to Churchill first and to Roosevelt, but it was a mission that frankly failed. Uh, he was heroic about it, but it did fail. And, and why do you think his message is so important today? Well. Uh, Making the news of human suffering known to the world remains a task for, for great people. And uh, we were very proud at Georgetown, of course, that we became his home. I should add that he liked to be thought of, not in the first place, as a hero of World War II and a spokesman for Euro European Jewry. He liked to be thought of as a new American and if I may say so, a professor at Georgetown. Uh, some years ago, uh, I had this story from the Dean of the School of Foreign Service. I was off becoming a Jesuit when it happened, but the speaker for the commencement at the School of Foreign Service was not able to come. And Peter Crow, then the Dean, asked Jan if he would speak please to the graduates and their parents. And Jan, who was the most gracious and gentlemanly uh, human beings, he would do you anything uh, his dean or his especially Jesuit president asked of him. He gave a very short speech, Peter tells me, about five minutes, in which he spoke not about his exploits as a courier, but about the chance that America gave him for a new home and the chance Georgetown gave him for a new home. And at the end, as I have it, he said uh, to tears everywhere, God bless America and God bless Georgetown University. What a great story. 
In terms of your personal encounters, do you remember, is an anecdote stand out in your mind? Yes, uh, he was too courtly to me. He, he thought I was an important Jesuit priest and president, <laughs> whereas he was the important person, a real prophet, a great professor. Uh, and he was, in his wonderfully Catholic way, very deferential. But he was also fun. Yeah. He was also fun. And uh, I came at a time when the School of Foreign Service was approaching its 75th anniversary. So we talked for some time about that. It was celebrated, unfortunately, after he died. Uh, but I also know, knew Paula, Paula, his wife, who was a remarkable woman, uh, haunted, as you may know, by what happened to her family, almost every one of whom was uh, killed in the Holocaust. Uh, do you know how we met her? I... She was a famous dancer. Be she was very beautiful, even in her real maturity. He went to see her perform called backstage, this is another side of Jan, <laughs> courtly, <laughs> gentlemanly, but still another side. Oh. He went backstage, uh, met her, they fell in love, and they married, and came together to, to uh, Washington. Well, it's an amazing story. Anything else you'd like to add? Not now, but Please. I'm sure things are going to occur to me. <laughs> Thank you. Probably so much. prompted by dinner. <laughs> okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wanda. Fantastic it was a great pleasure. interview.